It's just one of those evenings, but I am the speaker, the present, the presenter for this evening, Alonzo Adams. Thank you, Amar, for having me, your team bringing me on, and I'm excited to be here this evening. And I definitely want to talk to you about being an entrepreneur. You know, my topic is about why does most entrepreneurs underachieve? And there's a lot of reasons why they underachieve. And I know I'm not going to be able to cover them all, but I am looking for what are some important characteristics of being successful? What does it really take to be successful being an entrepreneur? So let me share my screen with you here. And we're going to pull up why most entrepreneurs are underachievers. Okay. So let's look at some, some stats first, okay? Because there are some stats out there about entrepreneurs. That being good, that being bad, but I felt these were some key stats for my presentation. So the one thing is that 60, 62% of adults believe entrepreneurship is good. It's a good thing, right? 62%. 55% of entrepreneurs say their biggest motivation for starting their own business was the idea of being their own boss. 46% of small business entrepreneurs, they're between the ages of 41 and 56. There's a study that shows middle-aged men start the most successful business. Myself, but I actually I started my business while I was 22. Um, 40, 40, 40% of the respondents think they think it's easy to start a business. Wow, who are these folks? And 49% believe they have what it takes. You know, they can do it. They can make it happen. But 20% fail within the first year and 50% fail within the first five years. So what that's telling me is that after five years, there's still a chance that 50% of the businesses are going to fail. So whoever, you know, is thinking about being in business or you're in business, think about that five-year mark because it's a 50-50 chance you're not going to make it, you know. But let's think about what it is that makes someone really achieve more. Because, again, you know, my presentation is about underachieving. Well, what is it? You know, what are the characteristics in an entrepreneur? You know, I've worked with many entrepreneurs. I've coached them. I've mentored them. I've been around them. I mean, what the heck? I've broke bread with them and everything else. I've been around entrepreneurs pretty much all my life. OK, so there are things that I identified in this word drive because drive to me is something important because I've always had drive. And I think that people got to be driven or have some kind of drive to push through, to really go through the difficult challenges, the up and down moments, the highs, the lows, the peaks and the valley to make this thing work. You got to be able to do this thing when people are not showing up. You got to be able to still figure out how you're going to make it happen. If you got customers that, again, they're, they're trying to push you to the edge, push you over the edge. You got to make decisions. You got to determine if you want to cut them loose or how you're going to even try to keep that relationship going. And then again, you have all kinds of things to figure out about taxes, how to market, how to sell. It is just so much of a lot of different nuances about running the business. But I do feel drive is huge. And I do know people that are driven, they're determined, and they are relentless. OK, so let's look at how I start to break this down. I, I've looked at entrepreneurs who are disciplined, got good discipline about their focus, about their thinking, about their behaviors. They tend to turn out more successful. The ones that are resilient, the ones that have intention, have intention. So that's intentionality. The ones that have vision, visionary. The people that are effective on a daily basis, they know how to be effective. They don't just think about, you know, think about being effective. They are effective. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. That is huge. 
because when I see people that have big dreams, big dreams, and they want they want to accomplish big goals, they got to understand that key key characteristic is discipline. Having the discipline day in and day out, week in and week out, month in, month in, month out, year in, year out, to be able to accomplish their goals. Discipline. Discipline is important when it comes down to focus. There are so many people that are scattered. You know them. I know them. I coach them. There's people that I'm friends with. One day they're doing one thing. The next day they're doing something different. They're they're adding something to their business. They're taking something away from their business. They're deciding that maybe we want to have this service. Maybe we want we want to offer up. Uh, something different with our service, but it's not a focus. I like a relentless focus, a disciplined focus to know exactly what we're going to do. The people working for you, they like to work for people that have a disciplined focus. How many times do uh, we we hear and we have heard about people that have started a business and the business is no longer around is because a person was too scattered. They were not they did not have a disciplined focus. They were all over the map. It's that same story that we heard that, you know, you're a jack of all trades, a master of none, right? You just do everything. So the next thing is that you got to think about where discipline, how discipline works. Discipline leads to consistency. You know, the one thing is about discipline, it will help you be consistent in what you're doing or what you're trying to accomplish. And I love someone that's on my team that is consistent. Consistent is something you can trust. You know, you trust people that are consistent, you know? So think about how that discipline leads you there. And even the people that come to work for you, they're looking to see how consistent you are. You know, are you different on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday than you are on Thursday and Friday? This is what discipline does. Discipline will help make, they will help you make the right choices for your goals today and then tomorrow, then the next day, and so you can become consistent in your behavior, okay? So when you look at how people's behaviors are, and again, it's about about trusting. You look at people's behavior and how they actually operate from a daily basis, right? Is it consistent? Do they consistently do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it? Discipline keeps you consistent because you do not let your emotions or obstacles prevent you from pursuing your goals and making the right decision. We all know that our emotions are going to get stirred up at time. There's going to be, again, things that throw us off. Something happens with, with a car. It breaks down. Something gets broken to a customer's house. Equipment gets broken. You're going to have to understand. You're going to have to make the right decisions, okay? You're going to have to make the right decision, decisions to keep pursuing your goal. The next thing is consistency will next naturally come out of discipline, and it will be fostered by discipline. So that is golden to me, is how powerful discipline is. And even, um, this is a great saying, and I love this saying, um, Uh, Albert Hubbard defines self-discipline as the ability to do what you have to do when you have to do it, whether you feel like it or not. I heard Mike Tyson say this. I heard Mike Tyson say this, okay, as well, because he was saying, even if you don't feel like doing it, you still do it because that's discipline. So discipline, it is the one skill that is necessary above anything else to succeed in any endeavor. That's why when people look at the military, how disciplined they are. When you look at athletes like Tom Brady, like Michael Jordan, I love to bring athletes into this because I do look at business as a game. Business is a game to me. And I think about um, how I need to be conditioned like an athlete to be disciplined, you know, about how I wake up in the morning. You know, I got to be a disciplined person. I got to do things when I say I'm going to do it. You know, I got to be disciplined about my goals. And so that's a that's a different kind of person. And like I said, when I see, you know, athletes like Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, these guys were disciplined about how they practice, 
how they got the practice. Kobe Bryant that stayed after the game. After a game, he would still work on his free throw, his shooting. After the game was over, they would have to shut the lights out, and this guy was still there. Unbelievable. Resilience. Man, what is it? Forbes wrote in magazine, and one of the most important characteristics um, of an entrepreneur is to be resilient. You know, you got to be able to take punches. You got to be able to get back up when you get hit, when you get knocked down. You have to be a resilient person, okay? Because resilient, you will gain strength from diversity. And there are going to be different adversities. You know, what, what happens when people steal your customers? What happens when people don't tell, you know, they tell a lie on you? They don't tell the truth. Your employees are talking be, behind your back. You know, your competitor, your competitors are, are doing you wrong. You got to have tough skin. You got to be able to weather the storms. You have to be aware of your influence when you're resilient. OK, you got to still be able to think you got to have emotional intelligence about being resilient, because, listen, you know, people are looking at how you respond to things, you know, how your behaviors are. And I tell you right now, I'm always thinking about what I said, how that, how does that affect others? And I want to make sure that I'm saying things that are powerful and that's inspiring people. That's not draining people. I want to make sure I'm, a, I'm aware of my energy. You know, my energy is a big influence on people and I want to know how I'm leading people, you know, but the one thing is I tell you about when I, when I look at about, you know, these peaks and valleys and being aware of how I'm influencing people, I think about, you know, the psychological part about things, not just the intellectual, but the psychological component, okay? Because the psychological component is, it's the capital about being optimistic and confident, you know? Confident, people like to follow people that's confident, you know? Confidence speaks value, uh, volume, you know? It's about, one thing is not about you talking to talk, but you got to be able to walk to talk, you know? A, a resilient people don't, they don't bow down to failure, okay? They don't. They're not afraid to, to, to fail, okay? Because if they fail, they know they're going to get right back up and they're going to get right back in the game. And they're going to keep fighting. You know, there's four quarters in the game. You might get your butt kicked in the first, second quarter, but there's always still the third and fourth quarter to come back, all right? Everything's not going to go as planned or the way you dreamed it up. You're going to have to be resilient. You may get, you may get an illness. You may have something that happens with your family. You're going to have things that happen again uh, and uh, with your friendships, your relationships, like you're going to have to find a way to keep pushing and driving forward. You don't give up. You got to understand what problems can do. They can create opportunities. We've seen this through the through the pandemic. You know, there has been you know problems that turn into opportunities. And I know there's people out there that's thinking about right now. You don't have enough staff. You know, some of us, and we're we're, we're starting to feel a certain way about that. But listen, this creates opportunity to rethink your business. Okay. You got to be creative. You got to be resourceful. We used to work um, Monday through Friday, but because we're not able to get all the work done Monday through Friday, we did have to add Saturday. That's going to be something that we're looking at to be temporary, not permanent, but just temporary. So we had to talk to the staff. We had to encourage them to, to let's do this together. Let's work our way through this. We're looking for more opportunities to bring in more people. Excellence is never an accident. It's always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Ooh, that is huge. You know, the one thing is I like intentionality, you know? People with true intentions and to be really intentional about how you live your life, how you start your day, intentional about your habits, about your diet, about the way you, you have your relationships with people. Be intentional. When you're intentional, you can become focused on your goals day in and day out. You, you're, you're practicing about being intentional, you know? You're serious about that. Intentionality is about a commitment too, you know? And when you look at look at about commitment, that's that will really get you to do your goals because too many people are stuck in, in their comfort, in their comfort zone. 
And you're going to need intentionality to be able to get your goals done. You know, you have to be intentional about and pur purposeful about your time to be able to do these things. You know, you're not going to have time to be wasting on Facebook. You're not going to have time to be wasting on TikTok, Netflix. You're purposeful about your time and about getting things done when you said you're going to do it the way you're going to the way you said you were going to do it. The next thing is be deliberate in your day. Be deliberate. Plan out your day. I see so many times people are just letting the day happen to them. They're not, they're not deliberate about how they want their day to unfold. I get it that things do happen and it does throw us off course at times, but be deliberate about your day and be um, planning your day the day before. Every day when I shut down, I already have the next day planned out. OK, I have the next day planned out. I'm intentional about it. OK. I see so much of this stuff going on, you know, people just not present, you know, they're really not. So they don't their life doesn't have great you know, no clarity. It doesn't have no purpose because they're getting pulled in so many different directions. So many things got their attention. Um, you know, I don't even have my, my, my cell phone right here, but people are so distracted by their cell phone. We see it all the time. People in their car, they're texting. They just don't really have great clarity. And I see these entrepreneurs are jumping at notifications, pulling them in different directions. Shut those notifications down and get intentional about getting your work done. Get that task done. That's the only way you're going to get that goal done. Is you're going to have to do those tasks. These gentlemen up on top of my screen, visionaries. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, Steve Jobs, no longer with us, iPhone, Amazon, richest man in the world right now, Jeff Bezos. Okay, Jeff Bezos, let's think about him for a minute. This guy had a big idea. Just even think about the name, Amazon, Amazon. You know, it looked like this guy was only going to just try to sell some books online, but he had a big vision. He had a big vision that was going to make all of our lives easier. The one thing about vision is, is why, I put, why I put this up there and why I thought this was huge, because you can go any way with this. But I do see a diminish in what's happening with vision. OK, so if you're not going to take anything else away from this, hear me out on this and hear, and hear, and hear this about vision. OK, when when you first got excited about your business. You wanted to, you got this idea that you wanted to be this entrepreneur. You were excited, man. And you were telling people. So now you're in about, you know, year three, year four, year five, whatever. Where's that vision at? Where's that same, that same drive? Where's that same enthusiasm at? You know, maybe even looking, you don't even have people that still with you because they didn't know your vision. You know, vision gives you energy. It gives your company life. You've got to define your vision. Define your vision over the next three years, the next five, the next seven years. What is your vision? You know, Cameron Harrell has a book out. It's called Vivid Vision. And, and what's cool about this book and Vivid Vision, it's like a dream, right? You know, my wife has these dreams sometimes and she says, oh, my goodness, it felt so real. It was like I was almost in the dream. It's almost like I could touch the person. It was almost like I could feel the water on my feet. That's vivid. So vivid means is when you actually, you sharing this with people that's going to work for you, people maybe you're going to borrow money from, who you're going to have as a vendor, you know, people that's going to be a part of your A-team. They need to be able to understand the vision. Where do they fit into your vision at? Where this vision is, where this, where this company is headed? What is the purpose? And again, this, this vivid vision, it's a sales page for your future, where you're headed. You got to know where you're going. That's what they wanted to know on the yellow brick road. Where were they headed? Okay. Keep the main thing, the main thing. So, so when you have vision, it helps you keep the main thing, the main thing. Because when you get off course, you get off track, you come back to that vision. You know what, what, um, what, uh, Cameron was doing with his, with people that he works with, they were creating these vision boards. 
Some of you may have them. Some of you may have heard of them. Some of them probably look like crap. And maybe some of them look beautiful. But the one thing you want to think about, create this vision board with beautiful pictures of exactly what you have in your head. Get it out of your head. This is so much where I have a tough time with people that coach is getting this vision out, having them flush it out, having them being able to communicate this vision. If you can communicate that vision, that becomes powerful, man. It really does. If you can really, truly let people know where that business is headed, what you stand for and make it big, man. Don't, don't go small, go big. I always tell people about dreaming big and thinking big. Whenever I have done things, I've accomplished things. It's because I was thinking and dreaming big. You think Jeff was thinking small? That's how he became the richest man in the world. He saw this thing far bigger than selling books. You got to see your business more than what it is. I was actually talking with a, uh, a new client and a new client um, that I'm that I'm going to coach. Man, this guy's dream was big. He fired me up. I started to say, I got to get back on my vision. I got to get get back to talking about this every day, every week. We got to know exactly where we're headed. Don't let this thing die. And and this is what I want you to think about. And this is why this question is there because. The guy that I was speaking to, he was able to answer this. If this all comes true, would you love it? Yeah, he said, I would love it. Yeah, I would love it. Because of what this is going to do for me and my, and, and my company and the people that work for my company and what this is going to do for the world. Focus on being productive instead of being busy, Tim Ferriss. How many people do you see all the time? They're just busy. They're busy doing something, but they're not getting too far. Business isn't getting too far. The reason why that's happening, you're not effective. They are not effective. I always talk about the effective entrepreneur. How effective are you? Can you get the most important things done? Can you stay focused? You, you got to be able to measure your results, not your time. So you're busy, but where's the results? What's happening? How about the people that's working for it? You got to even know if they're effective because they're saying they're busy all the time. I'm looking at results, baby. You got, you got to create and stick to this routine to be effective. You, you Listen, once you put together, you re, create this routine, how, how, your, how your morning's going to be, how your afternoon's going to be, how your evening's going to be, you're going to have to stick to it to be effective. Things will come up, things will happen, but you're going to have to be decisive. You're going to have to be decisive. You're going to have to be able to adapt. OK, that's being effective because whatever happens, whatever goes down, you're going to have to be effective. And when I say about being decisive, about being effective, and I want to bring that into the conversation as I start to wrap this up. You got to know when to let people go. That's customers. That's employees. You got to know when to let them go. That's being decisive. You got to know when to pull the trigger. You got to make a move to make your business go forward. I coach people and I get them out of that comfort, man, that comfort zone. They're trying to hold on to, to that comfort zone because outside of that, they're not comfortable. But I push them. I push them for they can get confidence. When you get confidence, then you're going to be more effective for getting things done. OK, but one of the most important things that I like to say about being effective is one, I use my calendar and my calendar helps me get through the day and the week by blocking off my time for I can be effective. But I think effective is a mindset. That's a mindset. So the other thing is to stop multitasking for you can work efficiently. OK, you're not going to be efficient. I don't care what you think. You are not going to be efficient trying to do too many things at once. Focus on the most important thing. Keep the main thing the main thing for you can get things done on a, in a timely fashion. All right. Delegate to elevate. 
If you don't have a VA and you need a VA, look into getting a VA. You need to bring somebody else into onto the team for you can for you can be more effective. Bring them in because you need to be focused on the most important things. The one thing that will really make you ineffective is worrying about things that you have no control of. That will make you very ineffective. So whatever you cannot control, do not waste your time and bog yourself down with things you cannot uh, control. You got to keep marching and moving the business forward. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to happen uh, over the course of your time being an entrepreneur. And there's going to be things strictly out of your control. But you're going to have to understand you cannot you do not have control over those things. So I just want to just thank you guys for being here, giving me the opportunity to speak with you and share this evening. It's been a, it's been it's been quick. It's been fun. But I again telling you, these are some important characteristics. If you want to be uh, be that entrepreneur that will overachieve and not underachieve. I get so frustrated and sad when I see people that are very talented individuals, very talented and they're underachievers. They really don't achieve true greatness. You know, they're not really applying themselves at the highest level. And, and, and the main thing is because these people are avoiders. They avoid, you know, they avoid hard things. They don't do hard things. They're trying to find the easy way, the easy path, the quick way. They're trying to look for all kinds of uh, different tactics. You know, you got to look at yourself in the mirror. Be honest, be truthful with yourself. You know, you're 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 the person that's holding your company back. You are. Maybe you're trying to look for sending sending on your manager to to a convention, sending them to training, and you're not thinking about yourself. Are you being the best possible, best possible leader you can be? Your people, your company, they need a leader. And they need one that's present, not one that's invisible, not one that's hiding behind the curtain. They need you to be able to step up because if you're stepping up and you're doing what needs to be done, then you will inspire them. They do need to be inspired. They do need to understand that they can look towards you and are you are the leader of the company to drive the company. And I get so tired of hearing sometimes and seeing these people are always talking about, hey, I'm trying to figure out how I can have, have a, a shorter day. I don't want to go in the office. I don't want to be there. I want to be an absentee owner and all this. I get it. I do. I truly do. But let's think about it. If you see the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, finding a way to get his butt into the office to make a difference, who are you? You see Elon Musk and you see how he has to visit his different businesses to make sure they're on top. Now, if you're not trying to be on top, you're not trying to be elite, then that's not for you. This message isn't for you. But if you want to be elite, you want to be the best of the best. I'm just telling you what it truly takes because I've been around a lot of millionaires and billionaires. And I tell you, they do what it takes. They put their foot on the gas. They encourage your people. They lead their people. And they inspire their people to be the best that they can be. And again, you cannot be in, invisible and your people are not feeling your energy. Your energy is important. It really is because it, it resonates throughout the company and it transcends down. OK, and that's when you hear that the, when the fish st sinks from the head down, you know, it's powerful about your energy. So you got to make sure that your energy is there. You got your name all over this. My DNA is all up in this. OK, so I just again, I want to thank um, Mars team for having me on board. I love doing these things. I love speaking to you guys. I'm looking to see you guys in person to see you in person. Reach out to me. Um, you can hit me up even with an email. Alonzo J. Adams dot com. Alonzo J. Adams dot com. Hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, wherever. I'm looking at all kinds of ways that I can be there to inspire you and to make you the best version of you. Thanks again and good night.